Hello and welcome. If you haven't picked up your card, please, card, please do so now. Uh, no birds today. Instead, I want to show you some river otters uh, last winter uh, on, a, on a frozen pond. Make sure my computer does not fall asleep. All right. So they're here on the pond and they are hungry and Good thing there are plenty of fish in the pond for the, the river otters to, uh, to hunt down. Uh, they're very hungry. They enjoy lots of delicious fish. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Uh, definitely have, have the teeth for eating fish. You don't want to be, don't want to be bit by a river otter, that's for sure. They're also pretty social. They like to hang out in these, these little ponds, uh, pods, see what's going on. Um, uh, Cuddle. They, they these otters at least seem seem like they they are good friends, and uh, all the same as as cute as they may look, uh, you don't want to get too close. Uh, they not only do they have uh, sharp teeth, they have uh, sharp nails as well. So uh, and best enjoyed from a distance. All right. What questions do you have about uh, the lab, uh, nested loops, anything like that, uh, to get us started? All right, one uh, couple notes. Um, uh, the first is uh, I have office hours as uh, from 4.30 to 5.30 as usual today, but uh, I will only be in my office 4.30 to 5 because for the second half of my office hour, I will be at the CS Social where there will be ice cream and pizza. You're all invited. That will be uh, between the CMC and Bolio, so that's where I will be starting at five if you can't find me in my office. Uh, other note, uh, the quizzes along with our first two labs, lab zero and lab one, are graded. Uh, you should be able to see the grades and any feedback from the graders on, on Moodle, and uh, please email me with any, any questions about those. All right, let's get into our sort of new idea for today by apply, trying to apply what we know about lists and what we know about for loops to a kind of situation that we haven't necessarily seen before. So define this list data and then have some loops. So I'd like you to take a couple minutes and uh, think about your best guess for what, uh, what this code will, will print as uh, it runs through these nested loops and then gets to the print at the end. All right, please discuss with your neighbor how you are thinking about uh, how these loops will interact with this list data we have here. All right, we have uh, achieved near consensus that indeed this is going to print out uh, 21. And uh, someone share how, how, you, uh, how you thought about this such that, such that we're going to get 21 in our, in our variable act. Yes, Henry. So uh, the reason I eliminated uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in the list, and then 3, 7, 11 in the list is because ACC isn't actually a list, and when you're calling it, you're not actually appending the list, so you're not adding any numbers. What the actual program is doing is just taking the value of each of those numbers that it's going through in its uh, list, and then it's adding those actual values to itself. So, so that's how I got the answer of 21. Yeah, that's, that's a great point, that we can see ACC is a, a number 0, and we're adding on to it. Um, and assuming I haven't given you uh, a broken program, the only thing that we can add to a number is, is other numbers. So 
this list data, and it, it is a list because we have we have the square brackets, things separated by commas. Um, when we first talked about lists, uh, I told you that lists can have anything inside of them. And if we have data, our list data has three slots in it. I know because within the kind of outer square brackets, there's three things separated by commas. And those three things are, in fact, other lists. And so we have a list data that has three elements. And it has the same, uh, we, we name those slots the same uh, that we, we've seen before. The first one is 0, the next one is 1, the next one is 2. But this time, in each slot is itself a list. And we can look inside there. And inside there is another list, which has two slots in it, one which holds, in this case, five, and one which holds six. And in fact, there is nothing stopping us from having lists inside lists inside lists inside lists inside lists. Because what can be an element of lists can be anything including another list. What are your questions on this? Anyway. I think I understand, but just to clarify, would the answer have been different if there were more lists? Like there was just one long list? So if, if we had a list like this, so uh, this is where we can think about this pair of loops that we have. Um, we said for uh, for x in data as our as our first loop there. So in this version of the list, what's the first thing that we assign x to? It's going to be the thing in the first slot of our list. So x the first time around, we get x equals the list 1, 2, because that's the first thing in our sequence of data which has these three things inside it. In this version, the first thing would be x equals 1, the first thing in our sequence. And inside this, we had for num in x. So when x is the list, 1, 2 is a sequence, we can have a for loop over it. Were x just a number, this would give us an error, because we can't have a number as the, like, the sequence for our list. So the reason we have nested loops, we have two loops here, is because we have kind of two layers of list. We have our outer list, and we have a loop over that, and then we have our inner list, and we have a loop that goes through that. So x would be 1, 2, then we get to this inner loop, num would be 1, then num would be 2, then we're done with this inner loop, we go back to our outer loop, x becomes 3, 4, we go through those, and then inside we're just adding num here, to act as we go along, so we end up with the sum of all, all the things in the list. To sum a list like this, we would just have a single loop that went through those numbers. Cole? If you had a list, a list, a list, say like instead of one, comma two, you had one, comma, and then one, two again, would the code break because then you'd be trying to add a list to a number? Yes, that's, that's a good point that the the number of nested loops that we would need would need to match the number of kind of nested lists we have. Um, uh, and yes, in the situation where 
they don't match, we're going to get an error when we try and uh, loop over something that isn't a list or add a list to a number. Jonathan? So because you're able to put a list in a spot in another list, can you put it in as like the name of the list instead of writing out the whole one in each spot? Yes, we absolutely could do that. If we have a equals 1 comma 2, b equals 3 comma 4, c equals 5, 6, we have three separate variables. We then say data is a, b, c, and data would be the same as our, our data in this example, where the first element is the list 1, 2, and, and so on. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sam? So with Python, you don't have like a coercion if you're trying to add like two different things that aren't the same thing. If I was adding like, I don't know, like type plus two or something like that, it wouldn't like print out a string type two, or would it? Yeah, so uh, so that, that's something that we, we will have to think about and that, and that will, will come up today. Uh, Sam used the word coercion, which just means if we add two different types of things together, some programming languages will force them to, will turn one into the kind of thing that the other is and let us add them together. Python doesn't do this. Python only lets us add numbers to numbers, or as we'll see in a moment, add lists to other lists, but we can't add two different kinds of things together. That will give us a, a type error. Other questions? All right, we have this idea of, of nested lists. I'd like you to take a couple minutes and discuss with your neighbors brainstorm, what might nested lists be useful for? Like, when might, when might we want uh, uh, to be able to, to represent data in this way of uh, a sequence inside some other sequence? Gabby? I don't know. I found one very specific situation, but just because it was like, I feel like common problems in high school problems and stuff like where you get trying to calculate like three or four students grades and they these are all of their grades on 10 different assignments and stuff like that and so basically the idea of having like the same values being like the same elements being represented i guess um and, but each individual value can be uh, applied to Yeah, this is a really great example. And we have data that's like if you've used a spreadsheet um, or some, uh, some situation where we have data in, in a grid or along two dimensions, that we have some number of, of students, they each have some number of grades. And so if we think of this as a list of lists, we have a list of students, and each element is itself a list of grades. Does that make sense? And uh, this is uh, an, also a nice example because this is exactly the kind of data that you're going to be working with on the new lab, lab three. Not grade data, but data on uh, elections to the U.S. House of Representatives in 2020. And the data is going to be laid out in this sort of grid where we have some number of rows, and each row has kind of different columns in it uh, with, with different pieces of information. Other ideas on, on types of things nested lists might be good for? John. I was thinking, like, you just talked about how you can add two lists together to, like, make them one list, but if you instead put, like, both the lists and a larger list together, then it, like, keeps the way they're, like, grouped, so you still have, like, a separation. Yeah, if lists in general are, are a nice way to group data together um, in a sort of organized fashion, and if the data that we want to group together is itself uh, lists maybe uh, if we have um, 
Uh, in the, the PGL and in the breakout lab, you've been dealing with a lot of things that have an X and a Y coordinate. And we might uh, have a bunch of different X, Y coordinates that are related in some way. And so we might want a list of X and Y coordinates. And to keep track of like which X and Y go together, we might have something where the first nested list has the X and Y for one thing, and then the next nested list has the X and Y for a different object in the world. Uh, and we can kind of keep track of a bunch of, uh, of two-dimensional points uh, using a, a list of lists. Other ideas? A related idea to this two-dimensional points is if we're representing color, and we'll talk more about this after midterm break, but when we re represent color on a computer system, it's actually typically three different numbers, an amount of red, an amount of green, and an amount of blue, which combine together produce a particular color. And so like these 2D points, we would have nested lists that were each had three things, uh, some number of red, amount of red, some number of green, some number of blue. And there are a lot of situations where the things we want to keep in a list have kind of multiple dimensions or, or multiple numbers associated with them. And, and that, that's when our, our lists of lists are, are going to be very useful. John? Can you put like a, like a null spot in a list with nothing in it that you want as like a, like nothing there but a slow spot? That's an interesting question. Can we have an empty spot in a list? Um, so when I put a list in Python, I put things in between square brackets. So I do have to, I don't have any way to, um, like there, there's no way to have a list of say three things without having three things uh, separated by commas. Um, we have seen a value in Python that means nothing is here. So we could have none be in our list as sort of signifying that nothing is there. Uh, but this is still a list of three things. So there's like a sequence in Python, whether it's a list or anything else, has a like defined number of things. And there is something that we can get at each of those places. Um, so it can't quite do a kind of uh, maybe the kind of blank spot that you're that you're thinking of. Yeah, I was just thinking like something like if you had like weeks listed out, or like some weeks start on like a you know first of the month starts on Tuesday, and then you don't have Sunday mm. or Monday, then you still want to like have it start on Sunday. Kind of. Yeah, there's. What I have shown you so far about nested lists, all the nested things have been the same length. That's, there's no requirement that that's the case. Yeah. So you could have, uh, in our list of weeks, some of them could be shorter if they, um, they don't go all the way to, to Saturday. Uh, Sam? I might have already been over this, but if I wanted to pull out, like if I was looking at that list data, right, and I wanted to pull out an element from within one of the inner lists, like if I just wanted to pull out two, would I do like print data, like bracket one, then another bracket? Sorry, like. Like, how, how do I pull up just two? That is exactly what I wanted to talk about next. So let's talk about it. So we have our kind of picture here of our nested lists. We have our named name slots. And so if I wrote print data bracket zero or print data bracket one, use our kind of normal normal indexing, uh, it would behave in, in exactly the way that we've seen, where it's a data bracket zero that says go to slot zero, get the thing there. 
So this would print out one, two. This would print out three, four. So far, so good. Now we could also say x equals data bracket zero. And we know that would make x equal to our list one, two. And then I could print x bracket zero because x is our list one, two, and I can use uh, uh, indexing to get the first element of that. And this would print out one. As we so get the thing in slot zero, that's one, two, and we know each of those things is itself its own list that has slots starting at zero. And we can simply combine these two steps into a single Python expression. Print data, bracket zero, bracket zero where this first data bracket zero gives us back our list one, two, and then we apply another kind of get elemented index zero to that. And so this would also print out one. What are your questions on this? Does that make sense? Yeah, so um, Yeah, so it looks like Python is reading that as a list. So if I had x, y coordinates, is there no way for me to like make a loop so it just reads the x, y coordinate and plots it as two numbers, but not the list, if that makes sense? Um, so in this example, if we had four x and data, and then inside this loop we wanted to to do things, um, I mean, not use x here. Um, maybe I'd say for points and data, and then inside this loop, okay, my x coordinate is the first element of point, my y coordinate is the second element of point. So we could use uh, this indexing to kind of pull out both the numbers from, from inside this inner list. Other questions? So here are a couple more print statements for us. If I say print data index one, index one, I say print data index 2, index 0. Uh, work with your neighbors, see if you can agree on what these two things would, would print out. All right, and I get a, a suggestion for, for what our print data index 1, index 1 is going to do. Or maybe someone I haven't heard from yet today. Maybe. Why 4? Um, so it's going to go to the first, like the first set, like one, set one, and then it's going to go inside and go. It's going to be like I don't know how to say it, but it's going to be it's three equals zero and four is one. Yeah, ex exactly. We we know our list three four is at index one, and we know that this own list has a slot zero and a slot one to be four. Uh, how about our index two, index zero? Um, five for the same reason. Why five? Um, so the second index is the third box, I guess, and then zero represents the first number in that list. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, any questions on this? All right, let's see how, how we're doing with this. So given uh, this list here, um, which 
Pay careful attention to where square brackets and commas are. Uh, which of those four print statements is going to actually print out the number four? All right, we're, we're not feeling B and D, but maybe A and C. Now please discuss with your, your neighbors. Uh, all right, uh, it will indeed be answer C here. And uh, I have started with uh, a drawing of, of how our list data is going to, to break down. I can see within the outermost square brackets, uh, I have a first uh, list and then a, a second list. And uh, if I were to um, I can label these slots 0 and 1, if I were to to kind of break down this thing at, at index one, what would that what would that look like? How many how many slots would this thing have at kind of the yeah, I see a, a bunch of folks holding up two. And what would be in the first slot? Uh, we would, yeah, we would label the first slot zero, but what would the actual thing thing be? Yeah, 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 we would have two, four, that leaves six, eight in slot one, and we could expand in slot zero here to, again, has two slots, zero and one, uh, and then we can uh, trace through this. Got it? To get four, we need to go index one, and then index zero, and then within that, index one. And we can just kind of keep piling them up, uh, like the, the print statement here, to keep indexing in further and further into our nested list until we get down to a, a particular number. Uh, what are your questions on this? All right. So, a couple kind of uh, interesting things that we can do with lists uh, in Python. Uh, the first is associated with a new term, concatenation, uh, or um, the uh, The verb concatenate means to means we're going to when we concatenate two things, that means we combine them into one thing by sticking them together. So if we have Say a list that has three, nine, and two, and another list that I'll call nums two, four, five, and six. If I do nums one plus nums two. I might be tempted looking at the addition to say this is going to add 3 and 4 together, add 5 and 9 together, add 2 and 6 together, and I'm get, going to get a list that's like 7, 14, 8. That is not what, uh, uh, what this will, will do in Python. This plus will concatenate, meaning it's going to combine my two lists into one list by sticking them together. So what this will print out is 3, 9, 2, 4, 5, 6. So we'll take the two lists, concatenate them, 
stick them together and give us one big combined list. This will give us back a new combined list. Just having kind of nums1 plus nums2 does not change our original nums1 and nums2. It produces a new list that is the combined version. Is that, is that clear? Any questions on that? Another useful thing that we can do with lists, and in fact, sequences of any kind is use the in operator. So we've seen uh, in used before in Python. Uh, we saw it on this previous question. We've seen that every time we've used a for loop force, uh, x in data, or for num in x. And uh, like many things, uh, in is part of a for loop, but we can also use it in other ways. So this is what I mean. Uh, if I said if I had a list nums is four five six and I said print six in nums. This is going, this is telling Python, check if this thing to the left of the word in is contained within the sequence to the right of it. So we have our element to check for and our sequence. And in this case, it would print out capital T true. It is going to give us back true or false. This element is contained in this sequence. Because this gives us uh, true or false, we can use it as part of if statements. So I could say if five in nums print something, L if one in nums, and five in nums, that would be true. If I check one in nums, that would be false. There would be no one there. And we're often going to want to check, is a particular value present in some sequence? And Python makes that, that very easy, uh, we can just use, use the word in. Questions on this? Yes? This checks for the values, it doesn't actually, like, does it check for like, um, so like if there was a, like a variable in a list like x, um, and then like you said x to six, would six in that list be like six in that list? Would that be true? Ah, that is that is a um, uh, an interesting question. I think that that's that's worth firing up uh, uh, VS Code to write a little test. where let's say I had x equals 6, and then my list is 1x10. Then I'll print out my list so we can see what that is. And then maybe I change x to 4, print my list again. And in both of these cases, I would check True or false, six is 
um, six is is in my list. Brian, is that is that what you were you were wondering about? Yeah. Yeah. So let's let's run this code, and we see that when I create the list, it is one six ten, and it's true that six is in the list. I change x to four, but like we've seen with other variables, changing x to four isn't changing what's in the list. Because when I create a list like this, when I have x here, we are telling Python there's something in memory that we've labeled x, go get the value in memory there and have it be the second thing in this list. And so it doesn't set up some uh, permanent connection between x and the list. They're separate variables. Other questions? All right. We've uh, seen the term before of uh, what we call um, text in Python. We, we, we have it in, in double quotes. And uh, uh, anyone, anyone remember our, our term for stuff in, in double quotes, Gabby? Yes, we have called this uh, text string. Short for a string of, of characters, of individual letters. And uh, a string a string is a sequence just like a list, where where the elements in the sequence are the individual characters, the letters of our string. Which means that uh, if I were to say s equals the string hello, I could do all the same things with s that I could if it was, uh, if it was uh, all, um, well, not all, most of the same things we could do uh, with a list, uh, for example, uh, I could say I could write a for loop over s, and s being a sequence of individual characters. If I said print c inside this loop, the first time through the loop, c would be assigned to the first element of our sequence, the first character of our string. It would be assigned to h. So this would print out h on its own line, and then we'd go back to the top of our loop, assign c to the next thing in our sequence, which would be e, print out e, then l, then l, then o. So we can write a for loop through uh, uh, the character of the string. Uh, we can use indexing on strings, because they're sequences just like lists, uh, which, which character would, would get printed out by s, uh, the thing at index 2 and in s. Yeah, yeah, it would be uh, just like uh, our list, our elements start at slot 0, and so h would be 0, e would be 1, l would be 2, so we print out l. We can use our len function to get the length of a sequence, and that would just tell us how many characters are in, are in the string. So this would give us five, because there are five, five uh, characters in, the, in our hello. Um, if we want to, uh, uh, we can also concatenate strings. 
and it does the same kind of smush them together and make a new string that we've seen before uh, with lists. So print s plus s will print out hello, hello, as so it will take hello and combine it by sticking it together with uh, another hello and print out hello, hello. Sam. I had a question. So if I wanted to do that, print s plus s, what if I did print s and I make something r and it's space hello? If I printed that out, would I get hello with the space and hello? Like, does it count the space as a character, or does it just does it like skip over that? Yes. So let's write some some tests, and this is uh, uh, one of these situations where. Uh, I'd like you to kind of follow along reading reading the code, um, and this will will be posted uh, on the, on the course calendar. We'll call it string test.py. and uh, we'll use Sam's example. S equals hello. R is space hello. I want to print out S plus R, and maybe I'll also just print out R by itself so we can see what that looks like. And so R prints out as space hello. When we concatenate them, there is a space in between. Uh, we could go print S plus space plus S. We want to combine S with a space and then take that and combine it with another, uh, another hello. So uh, print out hello, hello. Uh, there are a couple. Uh, of sort of special ways to write um, uh, to, to to write other kinds of spacing in in Python. So we just have uh, a space if we want to write a space. But what if we wanted to have it be a, a tab? Let's say like kind of a, a tab over. Uh, we could write that as slash t, and you see that the VS Code colors it blue. Because when we put one of these uh, slashes before a letter, it says treat the next letter as something special. And so slash t um, slash t means tab. Uh, and we also have a special slash n. Where slash n means a new line. So I can run this to see what it prints out. We see hello and then a tab, which is larger than a space, and then hello. And we have a we have our two hellos separated onto different lines because that's what our, our slash n means. Jeffrey. Can you uh, concatenate a string with an integer or do you need to type test that hmm. Yeah, the question is, could we concatenate a string and an integer? Let's say we have uh, uh, my uh, favorite number, and that is 42. And if I want to print uh, s plus my favorite number to get hello 42, uh, when I run this, I get a type error can only concatenate str, str is, is Python's name for strings, uh, not int to a string. So um, as Jeffrey suggested, we might need to convert one of these uh, into the other. Well, I, I don't think I can convert hello into a number, um, but I can convert my favorite number into a string using the str function. Like we saw uh, earlier, we could convert a string into a number using the int function. We can go the other way uh, with str. And now we can concatenate the two strings together and get hello42. Other questions? Cool. We have a function to say if something's in the list, but we have a function to tell me where in the list it is. Hmm. So, uh, we saw that we could use in uh, to check if something is, is in the list. Uh, there is a list, list method called index, which will return the index of a particular element in the list or throw or produce an error 
if that element is not present. Um, and so uh, at any time you're wondering, like, could I do blank with a list? Uh, the, the Python documentation of all the list methods, like, will, will tell you all the things that you can, you can do, uh, ask a list to do. Other questions? So there are two ways, and uh, two important ways that strings behave differently than lists. So the first is strings can't be modified. So you've seen we can do things like uh, add two strings together, and that makes a new string with the two combined. But if I were to say uh, s at bracket zero instead of hello, I want uh, mellow. I get a type error that says stir object does not support item assignment. That strings, you can't modify them. You want a different string. You just got to make a new string. And more on how to think about things that can be modified and things that can't, we're going to talk about that on, on Friday. But strings can't be modified. And for lists, the in operator checks for, is there any single element that matches uh, the, the, the thing that, that we're checking? Where... For strings, the in operator checks for substrings, which means it checks, is the string I am looking for match any portion of the, the, the string in question? So let, let me show you by example. Uh, if I say LO in S, it will check, is there any portion of the string S that matches LO? And that, that's true because LO, E-L-L-O, -L -L -O, appears somewhere in the string. But if I said, if we tried to do this with um, uh, 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 lists, where I say, is the element list one, two, in the list of one, two, three, four, five. This would print out false because it's checking each of these elements individually. Do any of them individually match the list one, two? They do not. So this is a, uh, a sort of distinction between um, uh, uh, lists, lists and strings. Uh, questions on this? Sammy. So for this specific example, if you wanted to check to see if one two was in one two three four five, would you do one uh, bracket and then and two in uh, one two three four five such one and two would either result in true or false? Um. Yes, so uh, we could say 1 in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 2 in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That would say 1 is in there somewhere and 2 is in there somewhere. It wouldn't tell us that they appear in the exact order 1, then 2. Um, for that, we would. there's no sort of built-in way to do that sort of check in Python. We need to write our own function that like goes through the list and looks at every... Kind of pair of elements next to each other and compares it to the pair we're looking for. So basically, we'd have to, to implement that function ourselves. Other questions? All right, and just like lists, there are lots of uh, string methods that let us do uh, uh, ask strings to do interesting things, and uh, Python, uh, the Python documentation has uh, uh, a 
big list of them and explaining all of them, which is linked from the notes uh, for today. And um, you can ask a string to give you the capitalized version of itself. You can ask it to count how many times some other string appears inside the string. Uh, you can check, does this string end with some other string or start with some other string? Um, and so the, the Python documentation here is our, is our friend giving us the kind of full explanation of all the things that we can ask, ask a string to do. All right, so I know we've talked about a lot, but there's one more, one more topic I, I'd like to get into. Uh, it comes up in, in the, the new lab three, uh, and that is uh, how do we get Python to work with files? Uh, in our sort of notional machine of the computer that we uh, talked about the very first day of class, we had like CPU and memory and data was moving back and forth between the two. Uh, but we also talked about uh, the CPU sending data other places. So we've seen that it can send it to the screen with print. And we also talked about uh, on our computer there's persistent storage. There's like where our files live and they stick around even when the computer doesn't have electricity. So we like Python to be able to, uh, uh, to work with these, these files. So I have here happy little file dot txt has a happy little line one and a happy little line two and I can make a Python file that I'll call files.py and Python has a built-in function open which is how we ask it to open some file so that we can uh, see what's inside. So open and then I give it uh, uh, the name of the file which is happy little file.txt and to this is going, this function open is going to return a, uh, the, the opened file, so I'm going to need to save that to a variable. Uh, not my file, but it's a happy file. And this file object that we get back, it has uh, different methods we can use to, uh, to read the contents of the file. So. I can say uh, happy file dot read, which will just read all the text in the file and give me back uh, a string that's all the stuff in the file. And I can uh, print out the text. And best practice, good coding style, is to always, uh, when I'm done with a file, uh, to close it with the, the variable that I'm keeping the file in dot close. So we can run this program, make sure that indeed we read uh, the happy little lines in the happy little file. If we didn't want to read all the text, but instead wanted to read the text line by line, and get back from it a list of all the, the lines in the file. And then print out lines. I see that I have a list with the text from each line as an element of, of the list. And we see that the first of these lines has one of these special backslash n at the end of it because in our happy little file.txt this first line has a sort of a new line at the end of it but our second one here doesn't our second one is just that's it that's the end of the file and so we can see that in what python has has read from this file All right, what are your questions on this? What, what doesn't make sense? Does 
Okay. If your file isn't in the same folder, is there an argument that like a path? Uh, yes. So um, for our purposes, we're only going to worry about files that are in the same folder as as the Python script we're, we're writing. Um, but yes, you can, uh, and it depends on what kind of computer you're using. But you can you can tell Python to to look in a in a different location by um, by by changing the the how you give the name of the file. David, um, what would happen if you didn't close the file? Uh, terrible damage. My computer would explode. Uh, no, in in this case, when a program finishes, it will close all files that are open. So in this tiny little program, I don't technically need to close the file. Um, but when one program has a file open, it can interfere with some other program using that file. So just kind of in general, good, like well-behaved programs close files when they're done with them so that they don't mess with, with other programs. And so it's a good habit to get into. Other questions? Sammy? So if you were to have like a file that's a picture, would you be able to use that picture to create its own window and have that be the background? Yes. Yeah, so uh, that's a great question. Uh, this this uh, function here, open, um, is uh, we're only going to use it for files that have text in them. And uh, there are, are different ways that we will interact with files that are, are pictures. Uh, and that will actually be uh, lab five after the midterm break. Uh, so we will, we will see exactly how we can uh, uh, read and, and display and even, even modify pictures using Python. All right. Uh, we have read a file. Let's actually create a file. Um, and for this, I am also going to use uh, my uh, open function. And I'll create another happy file, .txt. .txt is, is what shows up at the end of files that are just like plain text. They're not Python. They're not anything special. They're just, uh, uh, just text. And to tell Python that I want to write to this file rather than read from it, Python's, uh, we're, we're going to open files kind of going in one direction. Right? We're, we're reading the lines in or we're writing things out. To tell that we're writing to it, we provide a second parameter, which is the, the mode that we're opening the file in. In this case, we're opening it in write mode. So we say, we say w. And we need to assign this to a variable. And then this open file has write me the, uh, uh, a write method that we can just give it a, a string, and it's going to put that string into the file. So I'm a happy little file. Just happy to be alive. <laughs> And I want to make sure when I'm done with my, uh, with my file, I need to make sure, sure to close it. So this another happy file.txt does not currently exist on my computer. And using this open in the right mode will tell the computer to create the file so that I can actually write text into it. So if I run this, still reading in the happy little file. And look, another happy file.txt has shown up. Uh, but I made, a, I made a little mistake. Uh, I called write twice. But both of, all of this text ended up on the same, the same line. And anyone have a, a, a theory as to why this happened? Cole? Yeah, I didn't put a slash n into those uh, the the text that I wrote, and this is unlike print, 
which always puts a new line at the end of what we print. Um, write does not add a new line for us, so we typically will need to put the backslash n uh, as part of the text that we, we write to a file. And run this again, and we'll see that another happy file has these two things on their own lines. Note that, it, that the text that was there before blasted away, because when we open a file in write mode, doesn't matter if it exists, Python is creating a new blank file with that name. And so if there's a file that's already of that name and that exists, it's just going to uh, over, overwrite it. We could uh, uh, combine, we could use the, the concatenation uh, stuff that we've talked about to uh, concatenate kind of variables and, and strings and different things into kind of one, uh, one string to kind of write a bunch of stuff uh, uh, to one line. Uh, any, any questions on this, this file stuff? Anything you're wondering about? Cool. And, um, who won the tournament? Yes. All right. I have perpetually forgotten about this forever, so let's put a stop to that. Um, I have uh, posted the results of the uh, Lab 1 uh, Prisoner's Dilemma Tournament. Uh, the full output of all the rounds uh, is shown here. But if you just want the ranking, Sly Tough Mimic came in first with negative uh, 0.6. Winner, winner, chicken dinner was next. Uh, two tits for tats. Random Mimic, not Comrade, Medi, and my strat uh, uh, were all competitors as well. Uh, you can go to this page if you want to, to read about the strategies that, that folks uh, submitted. Uh, congratulations to the victorious um, that will do it for today. We're, we're over time. Uh, lab three is posted. Same partners as lab two. Reminder, from five onward, my office hours will be at the CS Social. And I will see you Friday.